The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The word of God we want to consider today is again our epistle reading for this past Sunday, the sixth Sunday after Pentecost. We're looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 to 9, and especially focusing on that last verse, verse 9. And now, brothers, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. Out of the most severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able and even beyond their ability. Entirely on their own, they urgently pleaded with us for the privilege in sharing of sharing in this service to the saints. For they did not do as we expected, but they gave themselves first to the Lord and then to us in keeping with God's will. So we urge Titus, since he had earlier made a beginning, to bring also to completion this act of grace on your part. But just as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in your love for us, we, and your love for us, see that you also excel in this grace of giving. I am not commanding you, but I want to test the sincerity of your love by comparing it with the earnestness of others. And now that verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. My dear friends in Christ, as I've told you that Christian congregation in Corinth, they were going through their share of problems and troubles and as they were dealing with those problems and troubles, oh, typical congregation, just like churches today, dealing with problems and troubles. The Apostle Paul, as I said yesterday, he said, we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. But Paul didn't want them to focus on those troubles. Instead, he wanted them to focus on their lives of service, on their living for the Savior, because he knew that if they focused on that, it would take their minds off their problems and troubles, and it would help them to get beyond those problems and troubles. And what Paul did, as we said, he, he pointed out the Macedonian Christians, how their love for Christ, how it motivated them in Christian living and Christian giving, how it motivated them to give to those Christians in Jerusalem who were suffering with famine, and how, well, their gratefulness for everything that Christ had done for them, how that so moved those people, and, and how it would also move the Corinthian congregation as well. But now, in our reading, what Paul does is he talks about motivating us for lives of Christian service and for giving to the Lord. Paul said, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. Now it's key for us to realize here that the Apostle Paul is talking to believers and really only to believers here, to people who knew, as he said, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's because it's really only the grace of God in Christ that can give the motivation that Paul is talking about here. It's only that love of God in Christ that motivates us rightfully to be gracious and loving to others. And well, only believers know that grace. Only believers know that grace. 
the Corinthians, they knew God's grace very well because when Paul was with them, he preached the law to them to show them their sin. And then, of course, he also preached the gospel to them. He proclaimed how Christ, well, as it says here, was rich but became poor so that they, through his poverty, might become rich. Jesus, the true Son of God, he left his throne on high. He left heaven to be one of us, to suffer like none of us will ever suffer in or could suffer in this life. And he did all of that just to be our Savior. Knowing that grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, knowing what he's done for us to save us from eternal death, from the punishment that we rightfully deserve, that motivates us to lives of Christian service and to Christian giving as well. There was a husband and a wife. They tragically didn't really love each other all that much. The husband, he was very demanding, and he was so demanding that he made this list of rules and duties that his wife was supposed to perform every day. And, and actually, in his demands, he demanded that every day she read over that list of rules and demands so that she would be reminded of them and would be kind of compelled into keeping those rules and regulations every day. Well, after many years of a long, trying marriage, the, the husband did die. And, well, the woman, she met another man who ended up loving her very deeply, and the two of them got married. Well, this man, he did absolutely everything for her. He did what he could do for her to make her happy, and continuing to shower her with tokens of his love and, and affection. One day, though, as the woman was cleaning her house, she happened to find the list that she had from her hus first husband with all of the rules and regulations and duties that he had enforced upon her. And the interesting thing that she noticed as she looked at that list is that everything that was on the list she was now doing for her new husband. And she was doing those things for her new husband not because she was forced or threatened into following those rules and regulations. Rather, it was her deepest desire out of love for him because of his great love for her that motivated her to do the things that she did. Well, doing things for her husband because he loved her, so that became, that became her greatest joy. Likewise, if we were to live our lives of service for God just simply because we felt forced into doing them, we felt compelled into doing them like that, like that woman felt compelled to, to serve her first husband, well, we maybe do those things, but reluctantly, if at all, right? But when we recall the grace of God in Christ, then we're motivated, as that woman was with her second husband, to live our lives for our Savior who gave his life for us, the, the, the grace of Christ. It's an amazing thing. That grace of Christ, it motivates Christian living and Christian giving. 
God's done so much. He's done everything for us. And doesn't that motivate us to live for him and give to him and, and the spread of his kingdom, the spread of his grace and love? Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, please help us always to appreciate and treasure all that you have done and keep on doing for us. We are so richly blessed. Keep filling us with your grace and love so that we want everyone to be blessed by your grace and love. And we do everything we can with our personal efforts and, and with our offerings so that everyone would know about your grace and love. Thank you for giving us that grace and love. We, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always.